We know more about the surface of the moon than we know about what the surface of our planet looks like. We have a very good idea about our continents, but we do not have much of an idea about what the seabed looks like. Now with the satellite altimetry, if you look on Google Earth or something like that, you'll see these undulations, you'll see little seamounts and things, but the resolution of that is absolutely horrendous when you think about what we could be getting. There's still so much that is unknown and it's very very important to know the depth and the shape of the seabed because it gives us some fundamental understanding like sediment transport, ocean currents, fisheries, knowing where we can lay a pipeline or a cable. It gives us some information about tsunami forecast and many, many more. Multi-beam sonar has definitely come um, a long way. Its initial stage was actually a lead line where people just dropped a line off the ship and measured it that way. In order to see a high resolution view of the seafloor, we send down these sound waves and you have a moment when you know that you sent the sound, it hits the bottom and then comes back up and that time that it took the sound to travel is how we know how deep that is. The EM302 and 710 that are on Falcor, instead of one beam below the ship, we have 432 beams that allow us to get a much, much larger swath of the sea floor. Falcor is in some way very special because the ship in itself has been made for speed. Normally this would create little air bubbles that go along the hull. These would disturb the signals. So to mitigate this, um, the engineers put a platform underneath the hull and that platform has got all the acoustic instruments on it but it has the advantage that all the air bubbles get pushed away and they do not have any effect on the acoustic instruments there. So the data quality that we get back, especially at high speeds, is absolutely fantastic. And the best part about our system is that our GPS that gives us our positioning reference can give us up to eight centimeters accuracy so when you're pitching and you're rolling and you're turning around and you're heaving up and down on waves, when the sound beam goes out and then the ship rolls and then it comes back, you're able to calculate where that beam actually struck the seafloor. We're able to render 3D surfaces that we can then interact with we can spin them around, we can look at them from different angles, which is very helpful at times to identify an area that we'd like to go to and investigate. So there is a Jebco 2030 seafloor mapping initiative uh, where they intend to have the entire seafloor of the Earth mapped to a reasonable resolution by 2030. It's, it's an absolutely fantastic project. It's a collaborative effort to create a definitive map of the ocean floor. Schmidt Ocean Institute and RV Falcor are committed to providing all the mapping data that we collect so that anyone in the oceanographic community can make use of it. And I'm excited to be a part of this because in order to reach the goals of mapping the entire ocean by 2030, I think it really will take every bit of effort and anyone who has the capability to share that information. Mm -hmm.